and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu zalim al jahal but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Bi madadakum min adrakum Sayyidi Rasul Kareem, Ya Khabib al Azim. Madad Ya Sayyidi Ya Sultani Awliya Min Shaykh Adil Faiz al Daghestani, Sultani Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mandana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Abdul Khaliq al Khush Dawani, Sahab Zaman Sayyidi Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyid Allah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sabbaka Siddiq Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Husayn alayhi salam. Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari Salaam wa Sayyidu Sadatina wa Siddiqina Al-Fatiha. InshaAllah from the immensity of the oceans of the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad that the month of the cave and the month of entering into the Divinely Heart the Divine the Presence and the Heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the next month is the month of Mawli the Nabi It's that in this journey of a hijrah and moving into the cave that opens into the city of light and then the month of Safa running from all that this earth is calling us to its worshipness and it's meant to take away all our faith. It's meant to make us think that it, we live forever and to accumulate and to, to gather as much of everything, of clothes, of possessions, of everything that the dunya is geared to make us want and in the end they have an expression that the kafan has no pockets, right? The kafan, the burial cloth that we'd be buried with has no pockets. We have nothing to take with us and in the end whatever people have they auction off and uh, relatives come, strangers come and they take it. And all we have is our good actions and khidmat. That all the ibadat and worshipness is in the way of tariqah has no value without a khidmat. That everything that we were doing of worshipness, everything that Allah calls for us is to make salah, is to take our shahada, make our salah, pay our zakah, go for hajj, do our fasting. All of these ibadat and worshipness and acts were meant for us to live a life of khidmat and service and the service to Allah's creation. Not service to ourselves but Allah wanted for us and brought for us Islam that I'm going to bring for you the heavenly kingdom and this reality within your being so that you pray and that you pay and that you fast and that you go for hajj, all of those were to bring about a sense of service within insan. Otherwise each of those in particular, what value do they have for Allah The prayer doesn't reach, doesn't give anything to Allah Your zakat doesn't make Allah to be wealthier. Your fasting doesn't have a benefit to Allah Your hajj is for yourself as no, no, it doesn't give anything to Allah All of these worshipness they don't give anything to Allah And Allah is asking us to do these actions so that a softness would enter within the heart. A softness that would enter within the, the body of insan, within the heart and the soul of insan that you are your brother's keeper. You are responsible for one another to be of service to one another and that is what Allah because He loves His creation. If this creation is created out of love and ishq and muhabbat, and we said that if the, the mother is one 
90th or 199th of the rahmah that Allah and love that Allah has for creation. Otherwise how and who gave that love <coughs> to the mother for the mother to love her children? It's a love that's coming from Allah's Divinely Presence. Otherwise women don't have that love just because it's there for them. It's a rahmah and a mercy from Allah to show His Divine love. No matter how much you think you are loving, no matter how much you think you are caring, I am far beyond that understanding of how much I care for my creation. And I created you to worship me and all of those worshipness were to bring about good character. So when we talk to just the regular Muslim this, they're also thinking, oh yeah alhamdulillah we pray, we do all these things but you know how come we're not improving our character? So well, that's because you have to enroll in the schools of taskiya, the schools of purification and take the Sufi way towards Allah in which was the haqqaiq and the reality in which Prophet brought and was lost. The way in which everything in our Islam is about the perfection of character and the most perfected character is the one whom serves his brother and sister and lives a life of service. And that's by example of the shaykhs, that's why we follow a shaykh because the shaykh is of service. He's living his whole life to gain knowledges, his spiritual practices based on the intensity of their spiritual practices and what Allah has bestowed upon their soul. Their knowledges are food in which they set a table from heaven. So when Allah says that to be with these people whom they want nothing from you but the face of Allah means that they only want the ridha and satisfaction of Allah to dress them and bless them that their time on earth Allah's happy with them. And as a result they give to you what they struggled all their life to achieve and that's their knowledges. And as a result their knowledges are a knowledge from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and they're filled with power, with lights, with angelic realities that these knowledges they come to the soul of people and it dresses them, it blesses them and completely changes their reality. And this is what Allah is that, eat with them, sit at the table of these men whom they want nothing but the face of Allah And they said that the, you, you have to come to them as miskeen, you have to come to them poor, you can't come arrogant, you can't come thinking, you know who I am, you know what kind of dreams I have, you know what kind of family I have, you know what kind of name I have. So Allah said, only the miskeen will sit with these people and they can be wealthy beyond belief but Allah made their, their khuluq and their character miskeen, that they're humble. There are people they're just humble and that's what the miskeen is Allah looking for, that their humble people will gather with them, these rijal in which they feed people. Otherwise what they're only giving food, they give food to those whom are actually physically hungry. But more important is they're broadcasting food to those whom are spiritually hungry. And their broadcasts are like oasises from paradise and beyond paradise. These are from the, the highest levels of paradise that can't be imagined, that are not even known to insan. These are the paradises that been given khususan specifically to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad as a personal inheritance. These are not the paradises for insan and people. These common people have levels of paradise but this Muhammadan haqqaiqs and these realities they are from the paradises exclusively created for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of the jewels of that paradise flowing out to perfect the character, to dress the people with these knowledges so that people will eat from them. Once they eat from them it's a fountain of youth, a fountain of reality that changes their entire being 
for all of eternity. And then Allah described they have to also be yateem because the yateem is that everyone in your life is a co-guide. And we describe many times that, that people say, why you need a guide? I say, look everybody's a guide but you need a guide who's guiding you to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Go back and reflect and all the people who said that you don't need a guide, they were the guides who teach you, you don't need a guide because they're giving guidance. Then the guides who try to advise you in life and dunya matters and everybody has an opinion. So this life is not free from that at all, everybody has a thousand people trying to take their ears and eat their ears and give them a direction. And most are off the cliff down into the abode of nothingness. So it means that we have to be yateem is that we are cut from people. Yateem is, is, a, is a condition within myself that as soon as I want you to come on my path of realities I quickly cut all my relationships because I found that all those relationships were actually like a rope onto my ear. As soon as I want to grow my beard, oh 500 people, why are you growing the beard? That has to be cut, that cut, this cut, that cut. Why you want to wear this hat? Oh you're going to be cut too. Why you want to wear the turban? Definitely now you're cut. So all of these things you cut from them because they are just the waswases in human form. So then they become people who are yateem, that all those people like uh, garbage I was collecting and they, they had nothing for my soul, nothing for my akhirah and when I reflected back they were just pushing me towards difficulty and not correct way of life. So then when the servant becomes yateem means that faqir billahi ta'ala in the way of Allah everything becomes cut, Ya Rabbi don't need all those things, just the people whom will make me to remember my Lord and to remember the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So become faqir, they're humble, they become yateem, they're cut from people and Allah describe them the asir, that they're like captive, that they tied themselves to the shaykh and to the way. And that's why we said that they give, they donate, they support, they give a khidmat and service so that they feel themselves, they're tied to that way, they're tied to that shaykh. They're taking themselves to make themselves to be committed to that reality and only those people can eat from that reality. So when Allah describing in Holy Qur'an that they sit at the tables of heaven and they eat from these realities, these are the manifestations of these teachings and those descriptions that Allah gives is the description of the student and the teacher. Because he manifested all of those to eat at his shaykh's table and as a result he embodies that teaching that way and all whom eat at that table must be of that character. And this is their, their khuluq there, the character in which Allah conditions for them and makes them to be from that reality. We pray that Allah dress us from that, bless us from that and enter into that cave. The immensity of the month that is opening up on Rabbi al Awwal, and this is a month of Safar, which is a dress of Hayba and Alimul Hakim. Allah's ancient knowledges come through the dress of this Hayba, and Allah's ancient wisdoms come through the dress of this Hayba. So, when Allah wants to dress the servant with a majestic dress upon their soul, He's bestowing upon them from Divinely knowledges, making their soul an angel with Sifat al-Aleem begin to come into their soul to dress them from that light, dress them from the realities of these ancient knowledges that want to now begin to occupy their soul. And the angel that carries al-Sifat al-Hakim and wisdom 
and softness and character begins to inhabit that servant's soul. These are malaika like lights, when we say lights coming to you they're carried by angels. And these angels of lights they carry these attributes and Allah directs them. Every zikr we do is an angel carrying this attribute of Allah and Allah give an amr and command to direct that angel to that servant's soul. And as a result the angels begin to move to that soul. And as a result these lights begin to fill that soul with that reality that they become the vessels for Divinely knowledge and that their conditioning is to have a hikmah and a wisdom. So that they're taught by shaykhs whom have a wisdom and that they teach them on how to use those knowledges, how to use the knowledge to the benefit of themselves and the benefit of those whom will be listening and one day hearing from those understandings. The immensity of the month of Rabbil Awal is opening. We pray that Allah dress us from its lights and bless us from its lights inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.